the player who's won it the second most is maybe not someone that you would guess. Mm, well, I mean, Hikaru won it last year. Oh, well, he won it once, yeah. So he only won it that once. Not the second most. Oh, I do have one thing to tell you. Yes. I remember it. I said that it shouldn't be too hard to get 3,200 in Blitz. Uh-huh. Well, I achieved it twice. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the C Squared Podcast. We are just a day away from the beginning of Norway Chess, a very, very important event on the chess calendar. A lot of uh, strong players are participating, new, very intriguing format as well, and we will be discussing all of that and more in today's episode. But Fabi, you, uh, your background looks a bit different. Uh, where are you right now? Oh, I'm just in the hotel in Norway. Got to Norway, and this is the hotel room. That's um, I my camera is propped up against a wine bottle. <laughs> I, hope, not... I hope you haven't up opened uh, that wine bottle. No, no, it's uh, let's see, it's a hotel wine bottle. Beautiful. Two hundred thirty-five knock. I think that's something like twenty bucks. That's not that bad. With Norway for being this so size, expensive, for this size, for that, this size, it's pretty. Uh... Let's look this up. So it's a small box. I don't know the exact 20, 22 bucks, something okay. like that. Yeah. Okay, that's not bad at all. Uh, cool. All right, let's take it back a couple of days. Uh, you were in Spain the last time we discussed everything. How did you um, recover in between events? Like, what were the things that you were focused on? And um, yeah, your overall routine in preparation for you know a pretty big event yeah it's a pretty big event but uh there wasn't so much prep that went into it i, I mean i kind of wanted to rest a bit and mm -hmm. after kansas kansas mm -hmm. was a whole lot of prep yeah as you know so yeah i didn't want to go overboard but did, did a bit of prep i was like thinking you know playing this bullet chess championship qualifier thing did you watch this um, I checked the results uh, very briefly. To be honest, I was more or less trying to take some some breaks as well. Um, I was on the lake for the last couple of weekends. Yesterday, I was on the lake um, just chilling. And to be honest, I'm kind of feeling the sun exposure today. But yes, um, I saw Anish was complaining on Twitter. Uh, I think Danny was going at him as well, telling him that he's a really bad bullet player. That's basically kind of what I was following, more or less. I talked to Danny a bit about that. I mean, this is like separate from the... First of all, I, I think they're entirely joking, both of them. Of course. <laughs> but you know how jokes sometimes turn into something, like some sort of bet or something? Yes. But yeah, I, actually, I think Anish is a good bullet player. And even though he doesn't play much bullet, he is, he is good. I mean, he's probably around 3,100 on chess.com level, mm -hmm. which is good. It's, I don't know exactly what it is. I'm not sure that I'm as good as him. And I'm, I'm not like amazing or anything, but I can play bullet. Um, but I, I, I don't know if he's better or, or similar levels. It might be similar. He might be better. I don't think that I'm better than him. Um, although maybe I used to be, but yeah, it's, it's a fun event, I guess. If you like bullet, it's, Probably the like most fun format to watch, I guess, for for the kind of casual viewer because bullet is is one of those things where the evaluation of the position doesn't really matter. Doesn't so if, matter even if you don't know much about chess, you basically get the same enjoyment as if you know a lot about chess because like it it comes down a lot to flagging. Um, it Do comes down though? to a random blunder. Like for example, okay, bullet we sort of can understand what's happening in the position, right? And you sort of make some um conscious decisions but it's a completely different feeling when i'm playing for example 10 second chess or 30 second chess that's when you're just trying to not flag and at that point it sort of becomes a completely different game and i don't get any enjoyment out of like 10 seconds or 30 seconds chess playing it yeah right yeah it's just but watching it can be can be pretty fun from a spectator, oh, watching it is fun. spectator point of view. Yeah. Yeah. Playing it, you know, I I also don't like bullets so much. I used to play a ton back in the ICC days. I, I would play a lot of bullet. 
I I play a little bit now. I, I don't enjoy it too much. Um, like one of the reasons is physical. It's kind of um, like painful. <laughs> I don't know. This sounds like I'm 80 years old suddenly, but no, no. If I'm playing bullet, my my hands get really cold, like painfully cold. Yeah. No, I I, and, I can get behind that. It's exactly the same for me. I get carpal tunnel. Yeah, it's because you're kind of gripping the mouse and you never let it go and you can't let it go, uh, which is different than Blitz when you can, it's kind of relaxed, even 3-0, it's pretty relaxed. You can um, let go of your mouse, you know, you can move your hands around. Bullet, it's, and I was playing these like 15 minute matches in the previous, like I played a match against Andrew Tang, who's obviously very good. Uh, Sergei Zhigalko, who is who's good, not as good as Andrew, but but still very good. And uh, Brandon Jacobson, three matches. Yeah. And 15 minutes alone was enough for my hands to be like, to be freezing afterward. Um, so I started to kind of regret that I played it, but okay, it's 15 minutes, you know, it's, it's whatever. <laughs> it's not that bad. And obviously I didn't get too far. I, I, I lost to Andrew. I beat Zhigalko. I lost to Brandon. Um, like, I feel that... Andrew is probably significantly better than me, although it was a close match. And Brandon, I don't know. He's he's definitely faster. Like these these guys have mouse skills that I don't have. Mm -hmm. um, Chicago, I won, but I think we're very closely matched. So that all the matches were, were relatively close. Um, and then I I once played Bordnik, and I I played Bordnik back in the day on the ICC. He was Dark Horse ninety six, I think, mm -hmm. some something like. That. And we were like evenly matched back in the day. I'm talking 2010 or so. Um, and that, and now it's just zero hope. I mean, I just get crushed. He's so much stronger than me in Bullet. Mm -hmm. uh, and to give some perspective, I think Bordnik is probably like top five rated on on chess.com. And just to make sure, is this the Bullet Brawl that you're talking about? Um... Bullet Chess Championship, I think they're called. Bullet Chess Championships. Let's see if I can actually find it. So it happened yesterday, right? That was that was a qualifier for the main thing. The main thing is usually invited. I was just invited, but this this time they had qualifiers as well. And um, Did, were you people invited? Qualified. No, 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 I wasn't invited. Mm. I think they invited me the previous two years, but maybe they don't consider me good enough, which is fair. And even in the previous two years, I was like heavily considering declining because I don't care too much about bullets and i know that my chances of winning are are zero uh so even if i like win two matches that would be a good result for me you know i'm not fighting for first mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so like I maybe i could win two matches but but i but uh i would never fight for first so okay i, I see the lineup right now for. it's uh magnus ikaru ali reza naraditsky andrew tang anish which i guess sparked the whole discussion um, Minle, Bortnik, MVL, Nihal Sarin, who is extremely fast. Uh, we were actually watching some of his matches live. He's just yeah, Nihal is, is incredibly strong in bullet. Like for me, it's very clear at the moment that Hikaru is the best bullet player in the world, and it's not really a surprise and not even controversial to say that. And then Magnus is is second best. Are we talking and, one zero or one one? 1-0. I think if it's 1-1, then it opens up a lot. And then I think Magnus is most likely the best. Mm -hmm. And this Although is... Although Hikaru is definitely out there. But for this one, the format 1 -1. is 1-0. 1-0, yeah. 1-0, I think, okay, Hikaru is the best. Um, Magnus is close to the same level, but still, its uh, results speak for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Hikaru has all the results. So then Magnus, and then I think third is pretty... Heavily contested. It's like Ali Reza, Nihal, Danya all have a kind of claim to it. Mm -hmm. And on a good day, like maybe Bortnik, I would say as well. He's he's really, really good. Um, that's, yeah, I'd say those are, but probably not as good as like Nihal, maybe I would guess is like number three. And maybe, uh, maybe Faruja Danya, it's, it's probably close. And I like on the, the thing is, Bullet is also very often refers to 30 second chess yes and 30 second chess to me is not like chess anymore yeah and the best player in the world is a guy who is like 
I don't know, anonymous untitled player named Arkady Kromayev. It could be anyone. It could be a GM. I don't know. But I, I think it's a GM. It is definitely a GM. And Chess.com probably knows who, who it is. Actually, well, I don't know, because at some point the account was closed as well. Oh, okay. Okay. But then it was maybe close to rating manipulation, and I don't know. It's just... I, I have no insight. I also don't particularly care. But the guy is like 33-33 in 30-second chess, <laughs> which is pretty amazing. Or I think sometimes he even plays like 10-second chess. Maybe maybe this guy only plays 10-second chess, actually. I'm trying to, starting to think. <laughs> okay, 10-second chess is not chess. That, let's just be clear on that. That's just mouse speed. Exactly. Exactly. It's just how fast can you make the moves? And if you're good enough, you're probably not even going to get checkmated. Even if you play really badly, you're not going to get checkmated in the allocated time. Uh, but yeah, 10 seconds chess, 30 okay, seconds chess. Just, just not... to clarify, 15 seconds chess. No, it's not 10, it's not 30. Yeah, that's not. 15. Yeah. So you decided not to play this one. Well, I could have played the qualifier. I decided not to. I, it just seemed like a big kind of time expenditure and okay i qualify for the main event maybe and then i you know play the bullet chess championship again and okay probably not too many chances of having a great result mm -hmm. so yeah didn't wasn't like high on my list of priorities but i will watch it mm -hmm. it's, it's a fun event all right um so you've been more or less prioritizing just resting before the norway chess which to be honest i think it makes a lot of sense um you still have I would assume plenty of preparation, some preparation from from the candidates, um, and definitely rest is is the most important. Are you feeling rested? Are you feeling ready? I think so, but time will tell. I I don't know. Um, I mean, I feel fine about the event, but you you can't really predict how an event will pan out. So hopefully, I play well. Mm -hmm. It's it's very unfortunate, in my opinion, that this event is not counted for the FIDE circuit. It's also highlights a uh, flaw in the FIDE circuit. Again, we're kind of back to this, but six player event doesn't count, even though it's a double round robin with the top three in the world and other, and the world champion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and two of the most promising young players in the world, Ali Reza and Prague. Yes. So you couldn't get a stronger tournament pretty much. I mean, you could theoretically, but, but barely. And somehow this event is not counted for the FIDE circuit. So again, tell me, uh, how this system is is a good one. Yeah, let's talk about the uh, regulations. Um, regulations of the tournament, six players, round robin, as you just uh, mentioned, 10 rounds, uh, two sections, the open and the women's. Now, did you guys do the drawing of the lots already? Do you know the pairings? No, I don't know yet. When is that going to be held? In like two hours from now? I think in like one hour from now. Oh. Yeah. Okay, okay. Time control, 120 minutes on the clock, increment of 10 seconds starting from move 41. So similar to the candidates, I guess, in that regard, obviously shorter than the candidates because you only get 10 seconds after move 41, but um, somewhat similar, right? You don't get any any increment before 40 moves. Well, I, um, but okay, in the, in the candidates, we had a second time control. Right. And here we don't. And here we have 10 seconds versus 30 seconds, which is such a ah, massive you difference. Get, you only get 10 seconds. You don't get the second time control. Okay, okay. No, that that's, that actually makes yeah. it much more <laughs> much more compelling. No, like once once you're done on time, once you get to like, you know, your last five minutes. Is the whole game. Uh, yeah, you're, you're stuck there because you also never regain time with the 10 second increment. That's just enough not to flag. Yeah. So yeah, time trouble is eternal. Uh, we have played with the system in the past. It is, it is fine. I mean, it's not like crazy. Like last year we had this system. Still, the games are normal. Mm -hmm. It's like still a classical time control, but you have to watch out to not get like down to seconds and then be stuck there in a complicated position. And uh, yeah, and then you're screwed, or yeah. maybe not entirely screwed, but yeah, you could be in some serious trouble. Yeah. No. Uh, that makes that makes it a fun watch for sure, and. Um, What's different than most other tournaments is that if you make a draw in this tournament, you go to an Armageddon. So you play another game with the opponent that you just played the classical game. And the time control of the Armageddon is quite special. White has 10 minutes, Black has 7 minutes. 
with an increment for both players of one second per move, starting from move 41. So again, no increment up until move 40. Starting move 41, you get one second per move, which so, to be I honest, that, makes no difference. <laughs> uh, well, it, I mean, it does, does ensure that you don't get flagged, but I think they might change this. I'm not sure because in the past, I remember that we have like discussed the increment, what it should be, should it be one second, should it be two seconds, and should it be after move 40, 40 or move after move 60. So I wouldn't be surprised if during the technical meeting, which is soon, that we discuss it and maybe uh, the increment is only after move 60. It could be. Uh, I'm not sure, but that would definitely be one of the points of discussion because from experience, that's what we discuss every year. Mm -hmm. When should the increment be and should, <laughs> and should it be one or two seconds? Uh, there's even times when they suggested that there is no increment ever, but then you can actually get flagged and people don't really usually like to see pieces flying and people getting flagged down like a lot of material as has happened you can check um there was a game from the women's world cup in like 2021 yeah. i think it was Adelka against uh matnadze matnadze and Spain. yes yeah yeah and and this game ended with like literally they're not making moves anymore the pieces are not fully on the board somewhere on the ground not a single legal move is played and this somehow decides the result of a match in an important tournament so yeah that's that's something that people try to avoid um there's like some other famous examples if people want to look up like levon aronian against vladimir kramnik from the grand slam tournament i don't remember which year but i would guess like 2011 or 2010 mm -hmm. um ended in a similar way uh, well they were making legal moves but still like someone got flagged in a like Kramnik got flagged, I think, in a much better winning position, or maybe it was a draw, but it was something where he would never lose, but he got flagged. And uh, and Kramnik also against Abdu Sitarov got flagged. And so there's there's a lot of cases. But there's precedent, yeah. Yeah, I, I like the increment, just to ensure that that doesn't happen. Yeah, another cool point uh, regarding this tournament outside of the Armageddon, um, which clearly defines who is the winner and the loser of uh, a particular matchup. The points system. For a win in this one, you get three points. For a loss, obviously, in classical, uh, you get zero points. So wins in classical, extremely important. Uh, draw in classical and win in Armageddon gives you an extra half a point. Um, so quite cool. I really like that aspect of it. So uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty yeah, this, cool. This sort of system means that there are some like theoretically system, yeah. yeah the scoring system means that there are theoretically some rather odd outcomes like let's say one player draws all their games and wins all armageddon games they get the same amount of points as someone who wins half of their class games and loses half which was the case <laughs> last so, year with magnus yeah so you could either lose half your matches or win all your matches and you still get the all the points um well last last year magnus i think lost one game in classical against, against me you. yeah and he i think he might have drawn the rest yes he did and he won all the armageddons did he win all the armageddons though? I, are you I sure i think so i am pretty sure he won all the armageddons he might have wow. lost against ali really? reza but did he lose against ali reza no 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 i, I think he we... lose to back in the last round in armageddon or maybe the last round yeah we will have to check or somebody i think against Notre back in the last round they but I, I, I could be mistaken. The Armageddon's are a bit faded in my memory, but uh, yeah, I, I have a feeling he might have lost in a completely irrelevant for the tournament stand in this game against uh, Noderbeck, who last year Noderbeck had a really poor tournament, um, uncharacter uncharacteristically poor. Yes. And Magnus also had a uncharacteristically poor Norway chess tournament last year. Yeah. But he is a player who's won it the most, no big surprise. And... The player who's won it the second most is maybe not someone that you would guess. Mm, well, I mean, Hikaru won it last year. Well, he won it once, yeah. So he only won Which it that, once. Not the second most. Um, okay, tell me. Uh, Sergei Karakin. Okay, all right, all right, yeah. He won it twice. Twice. The, the first two years. Hmm. Wow. And then I'm not sure he ever played it yet. <laughs> so he but maybe has hundred percent strike history. I'm yeah. not sure he might have he might have played one of them, but I, I just can't remember. That's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. 
Um, oh, he definitely has played against others because in 2018 I played him. Um, no, I'm definitely mistaken. 2018 I definitely played him. Cool. 2017. Okay. Anyway, it's not not relevant. But whatever. Let's talk about um, seconds. Who's there with who? And I guess um, we can go through the uh, through the general names. Let's start with Magnus. Who did you see Magnus? I would with? guess Peter Hein Nielsen, but I don't know for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know for sure. So I would guess Peter Hein Nielsen, who is his like longtime second. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if Ali Reza is here with Sheparino or not, but maybe. Chepa, um, Chepa is back. He's definitely, well, he's here. I, I think he's with Ali Reza, but I'm not 100% sure. Really? I mean, he and, could be with one of the girls. Um, so he was, we're saying this because at the canvas, he was with Nurgil Salimova. Salimova. Yes. Salimova. Yes. So, and we know that he was a second of Ali Reza during the last candidates in 2022 in Madrid, but he wasn't with him during this candidates. So. Well, wait, wait, wait. He he was he was not at the 2022 candidates. He he had been working with Ali Reza before that. Yes. But he was definitely not at the 2022 candidates. Not with him, but he was working with him during. That's possible. Like I, I just he wasn't physically there. That much it. I know. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, cool. All right. So. Chaparinov is there. We don't know exactly who it who he is with, but we can assume, I guess. Uh, since Salimova is not playing in the women's tournament, Hikaru. I I think I saw Chris, but I I would guess Chris. No surprises yeah. there. Is Ding with like anybody? People are mostly... Ding is. I think he goes to tournaments with his mother and not with the coach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which also he like in Weisenhaus that was. He was um, traveling with his mother. Mm -hmm. And um, who else? Prague. I, I haven't seen Prague yet, so I don't know. But maybe he's continuing to work with Peter Swedler, as they did during the candidate. That seems to be a, a long-term thing, right? Well, I, again, I don't know any details of it. They were together at one, at one tournament, but it was a big tournament. So, uh, And they did say that they started, I think, in 2023. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it could be that they're they're working permanently. That that's that could be the case. Cool. And did we? And uh, we didn't forget anyone, right? That was six players. No, that was it. So Ali Reza, we still don't know. Um, and in the women's section, have you seen any any of the ladies during the? Yeah, I saw Lei Ting Jae. I saw Muzi Chuk. Yes. Um, I saw Wen Jun's signature on a chessboard. So that's concrete evidence that she has she's, she's around. signed the chess board. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Vaishali. I, I didn't see Vaishali, but like um, pra Pragnanta and Vaishali are siblings. So they, if I'd seen them, they, I probably would have seen them together. Or, um, so I haven't seen either of them. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that all the players are here. Pia, I haven't seen. Pia Kramlin is the... One of the players in the women's tournament. I mean, we, we talked about the players last time, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I haven't seen Pia. Um, uh, when June late. And who are you? Oh, wait, there. Because I think we we skipped you, but I wanted to leave you for last. Who are you with? Oh yeah, I'm with Miguel Santos Ruiz. And um, yeah, we've worked together in the past, as you know. Yep. Yeah, he was uh, he was around during the candidates as well, uh, remotely, but briefly, but remotely also. Um, but yeah, you've been you've been having a long term, let's say, working relationship with with Miguel. Miguel. Yeah. Why did I say Miguel? Miguel. Yeah, that's, that's Miguel. <laughs> Miguel. Yeah. Miguel is is the very Americanized way of saying Miguel. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, it should be a fun tournament. Um, oh, I do have one thing to tell you. Yes. I remember I said that it shouldn't be too hard to get 3,200 in Blitz. Uh-huh. Well, I achieved it twice. You have? Wow. Yes. Well, well, congrats. Big clap. Yes. Big clap. Yeah. Once during Title Tuesday before performing badly at the end and dropping below. And then last night, I after my flight, I decided to play some Blitz 
I played an account by the name of Ali Reyes a uh, Fire Ooze a uh, Ali Reyes a uh, that's it's like spelled out. Hey, you've probably seen this account, right? I don't think I did. No. Okay. And um, played a bunch of games, and I got thirty two hundred again. Uh, I'm like a hundred percent sure it's not actually Ali Reza. <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, so farming is, uh, although I wasn't really farming because he's, he's a very strong player. So I wasn't sure it was a bit of a risk. Like the best way to kind of climb is to, to find a, a player who you're comfortable to that you won't like drop a game against. And I took a risk and played a very strong high rated opponent, 30, what, like 30 or so. Mm -hmm. And it worked out got to 3,200 um any any big behind the scenes uh workout stories have you seen anybody in the gym have you i haven't been to the gym have haven't you been to gotten the gym. to the gym yet okay you haven't been to the gym no. all right well um we'll keep that in mind for the next episode whether you're going to have any huge behind the scenes stories until then i think it's probably time for you to go to the technical meeting and the opening ceremony um oh no opening ceremony today a technical meeting will happen technical meeting find out the pairings and uh and tomorrow's the first round so tomorrow is the first round yeah tune in and uh hope it's a fun event should be a fun event should be a fun event cool all right fabi well get some rest thanks hang around with with the boys get some some workouts in uh get some prep in and uh good luck tomorrow Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. Bye-bye.